Hello and welcome to the April 2019 edition of the So What Box. My name is Taylor Franz from Taylor Made Tailoring, and today we are going to learn how to make a cute Easter Bunny drawstring backpack. If you missed receiving this kit, you can purchase it on our past boxes page and there is a link in the description of this video. When we unpack this month's box, we are going to find a spool of thread, some pins, a hand sewing needle, and a sewing machine needle. We also have some paracord string, and a fluffy bunny tail, some webbing, and our fabric pieces. The first pieces that we are going to work with are the ear-shaped pieces. We're going to line them up right sides of the fabric together and pin two of these pieces together along the long edges. We're also going to repeat this with the other pair of ear pieces. Once we get these pinned, we are going to head over to our sewing machine. We are going to sew along both long edges of the ear pieces, and we are going to leave the base of the ear unsewn. Starting at the base of the ear, let's line up the edge of our seam with the edge of our presser foot. We are going to have some pretty narrow seam allowances. When you line these up, we are going to start by making sure that we hold on to both strings as we start sewing. Once you have gone forward a couple stitches, we are going to reverse stitch. And this will essentially tie a knot in the beginning of our seam so that it won't unravel as we turn the ear right side out. This sewing machine that I am using here has a little lever that is marked with a U-turn arrow. When I hold this lever down and push on the pedal with my foot, the machine reverse stitches. Most machines have either a lever or a button that is marked with the, a U-turn arrow. When you get to the tip of your ear, do not sew off the edge. Get about one quarter of an inch away from the edge and then make sure that your sewing machine needle is down into the fabric. If it is not, reach to the right side of your sewing machine and turn the large knob until the sewing machine needle moves down into the fabric. Once the needle is down into the fabric, you can lift the presser foot and pivot the fabric around the needle so that we can continue sewing back up the other side of the ear. When you get to the end, back up a few stitches and then continue sewing forward off the edge of the fabric. Now we are going to turn the ear right side out. Once you get it started with your fingers, it's a good idea to grab a pen or pencil and use that to help you poke out the pointy part of the ear. Once you've done those steps with both ears, we are going to press the ears flat. Make sure that your iron is on the cotton setting for this step. Once you've pressed the ears flat, we are going to fold over the base part of the ears to make the ear look more lifelike. 
fold the ears as shown in this video and then press flat and pin. Next, we are going to work with our rectangular pieces. We are going to make a triangle along the short edge of these pieces as shown in the video. We want the short end of the triangle to be about one half of an inch and the long end along the fold to be about four inches. Use your iron to press this fold flat and then fold the triangle over itself one more time to encase the raw edge. Press this and then pin it in place. And then we are going to repeat on both top corners of both of these pieces. Once all four are pinned in place, we are going to go back to our sewing machine and sew down the center of this triangle. We're going to start at the one half inch wide part and sew all the way down to the point on all four of these triangles. We are now going to iron these triangles flat and ensure that the wrong side of the fabric, which is the side with the visible triangle flaps, is facing up on the ironing board. Now we are going to fold over one inch along the top or narrower part of this rectangular piece. Once we fold that over, we are going to iron it flat and then fold it over itself again. Repeat this on the other rectangular piece. Pin these double folds in place and then we are going to sew along the inside fold line of both of these. This is going to create a tube that the drawstring is going to go through. Press these flat and then get out your large pieces and grab the ears that we folded, ironed, and pinned earlier. Pin your ears with the raw edges lined up with the top flat piece of one of your large pieces. We are going to put the ears about four inches in from each edge. Now 
once you have pinned your ears in place, line up the bottom edge of one of your rectangular pieces with the top edge that we just pinned the ears onto. Make sure that the right sides of your fabric are together. Do the same thing with your pieces that don't have the ears connected and then we are going to sew these pieces together. Press these seams flat with the ears facing down towards the bottom of the bag, which is going to automatically make those inner seams be pressed upwards. Fold your webbing pieces in half, matching up the raw edges, and pin them along the side of your bag with the fold towards the center of the bag, matching the raw edges with the raw edge of your bag piece. We are going to put them right above where the curve stops on your bag. Place one on both sides. Now we are going to pin the front and the back of the bags together, making sure that we line up the seam that goes across the middle of both pieces. Do not sew over the one inch tubes that you made earlier at the top of the bag. Start sewing just below these tubes and sew all the way around the bottom of the bag until you get right below the other side of these tubes. And that is where you're going to end sewing. Turn the bag right side out and then iron the edges flat. Guess what? We're almost done, but it's time to take out your hand sewing needle. Get a good three feet of thread and thread your hand sewing needle. We are going to double the thread up and put two or three knots in the end of the thread. Pick a place where you want your tail to go, which is probably going to be the center of the bag. We're gonna start hand sew from the inside of the bag and make sure that you come out through the hardcore part of your fluffy bunny tail. This way we'll make sure that the bunny tail will get sewn on very well. Once you come out, you're gonna go back down through the tail and the fabric Go ahead and do this two or three times and pull tight so that the tail will stay on. Here I am videotaping a close up of how to tie a knot in your hand sewing when you are finished. You are going to want to use your hand needle to just grab a couple little pieces of the material and then pull through like you're making a stitch but don't pull the thread through all the way. You're going to want to leave a loop for you to put the needle back through. 
Once you pull this tight, it's going to make a really nice knot. Go ahead and do this two or three times before cutting the thread. Now we are going to thread our drawstrings. The ends of these drawstrings have been pre-melted for you so they won't unravel. Take one end and start going through the first tube and then you are going to go through the second tube. Next we will thread the second piece of paracord. Start on the opposite end of the tubes and thread through and then thread back. Now we are going to even up the ends of these paracord pieces and then thread one from each side through the little loops that we made down by the bunny tail on the edges of the bag. Once you have threaded a piece through, go ahead and tie a knot with both pieces from that side. And there you have it, an awesome Easter bunny bag. Make sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also take a look at our So What box subscription. That link is in the details below this video and we would love to hear what you thought about the video. Have fun sewing!